The intention of this thesis is to demonstrate how the Catalan Vault technique can be updated using digital tools in connection to the real world. The Catalan Vault or Tile Vault is, in contrast to a traditional vault, possible to build without using formwork because it builds upon adding layers of light brick tiles. It is also interesting because it can cover large spaces and still remain very thin as can be seen in this comparative chart by John Oxendorf. The technique originates from medieval Catalonia and on a study trip there I visited some of the key buildings that uses this technique and scanned their vaults in 3D using the cheap method multi-ray photogrammetry. One of the oldest buildings is Santa Maria del Mar from the 14th century. And here the technique was used as an infill between the ribs, which is the stone skeleton of the Gothic system. And here you can see the results of the 3D scanning technique that I used throughout the thesis. And this technique is especially good for scanning masonry because it uses uh, regular photos as input and uh, it's quite easy for the program to track features in masonry. And a few centuries later the tile vault was used more on its own and here's a great engineering feat in a little town called uh, Villasar de Dalt where uh, a master builder by the name of Rafael Guastavino got involved with the project to build a theatre called Teatro La Massa and he uh, designed this dome in the late 19th century which is uh, 17 meters in diameter and the rise is three, only 3 meters and it's only 5 centimeters thick unreinforced but to deal with the horizontal forces, there is an iron tension ring around the perimeter of the dome. Guastavino might have been the main star of tile vaulting in, in history, but the biggest star to use tile vault is actually Gaudí. And he used it as a bread and butter technique in many of his projects, like this web of uh, arches in uh, Casamila, La Pedrera. He probably realized that this was the cheapest way to realize many of his crazy freeform ideas. And in Barcelona there were plenty of craftsmen who were familiar with this technique. In fact, even industrial buildings was built using this technique, like this textile factory by Louis Munconi. And the efficiency probably boils down to the fact that the tiles used are so light that you don't need any formwork. You can just build it and cantilever the, the tiles made there uh, using a fast setting gypsum mortar. Um, and this is a vault uh, I built last summer. Um, it's a barrel vault, it's a root cellar project. The, the, the shape of the barrel vault um, is, um, comes from a dynamic relaxation form binding. And that form binding is uh, a way of uh, getting structures which only has works in compression. And uh, with a parametric modeling tool uh, called Grasshopper, um, I, I made a, a script that uh, optimizes the shape for not, not only its own weight, but uh, the side pressures uh, from the soil. The green line is the shape the optimum vault would have without the soil, and the, the black is the shape with the soil. And also, if you if you want, you can add you could add uh, point flows, and then you see how the optimum shape changes to accommodate for for that flow. The, the shape they they produce must be contained within the thickness of the final structure. So the brick vault needs to contain all these lines except the green one. 
but when you want something that's not necessarily the optimal uh, the optimum shape dynamic relaxation can be a bit tricky and there are other methods to design vaults and the old way to do this was the, with using graphic statics and that method has recently been developed into 3D by Philip Block and John Oxendorf. And the Block Research Group has a neat tool to design vaults called Rhino Vaults using this new technique, which is called Trust Network Analysis. And using that, I continued to work on the root cellar and designed a more complex vault. Uh, actually a domical tile vault, which is asymmetrical. And an uh, advantage of this method is that you get a force polygon, which represents all the forces within the, the vault. And using uh, the force polygon, you can change the shape to a less optimal, but, uh, but still viable form by uh, moving or rescaling forces in the uh, force polygon. So this means form finding is pretty straightforward, but how do we know that what we build is actually what we designed on the computer? How do we analyze the finished thing? For example, we could use the 3D scan technique that I demonstrated previously. Here's the point cloud from the dome you saw in the theater earlier. And uh, I made a, a surface using the point cloud. And uh, but then you can use this, uh, this uh, geometry to, to perform uh, analysis and stability and uh, risk analysis using the pen, for example, here. Um, so how, uh, you might wondering, be wondering, how, how did that tile work? Workout. You saw my uh, performance there. Earlier. Uh, well, not not so not so good actually. <laughs> um, this is uh, sections from from the three D scan wall, and here I use the uh, formwork just to start. And uh, you see the blue line represents the op optimal shape, and and then uh, the vault corresponds but as I moved away from, from the form, uh, the shape degraded and uh, even caused negative curvature at some places, which is really bad for, for compression structure. We're lacking in precision still, even if we have a lot of good digital tools. Um, and what comes to mind when you think of precision? Lasers. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the idea was that it, two lasers could uh, intersect at a point. That point could be represented within the 3D model. And, uh, and then if you could uh, control the, the, the lasers from the 3D model, then you would be able to build, to translate the digital model to reality. And uh, this is the first prototype. It's uh, hooked up to Grasshopper. Remember the parametric modeling too. And uh, it works, but the precision was very bad. So, <laughs> a good thing when precision is bad is to scale things up. It's a big prototype. Just for reference, don't use wood when you want precision. You can see uh, testing using this uh, in my room with a lot of smoke from Venus. Turned out that it worked. It, uh, it could move to, to points in space where that represented uh, the moon. Okay, so it seems to work, but does it actually work in reality? Let's test it at a, a workshop and thanks everyone who participated. We'll look at it, but first we're going to look at the digital pre preparations for the workshop. Then I scan the site, and you remember the, the barrel vault from last summer. 
and, and this is the laser uh, representation in the 3D model. Uh, so I tried different uh, cameras to scan it, and uh, and it turned out the accuracy was uh, less than one centimeter. It was actually better at most places, but but uh, that was uh, as good as I needed. So so the scan was then imported into Rhino, and then I could um, build digital models on top of the on top of reality, basically within. Uh, the, the forms could adapt to the site, well, the opposite is good. It's, it's common with the vaults that you um, you need a precision and it has to be exactly this uh, shape and then you have to build exactly the support as well. But this is like the reverse, that you, you have the, uh, the vault conforming to the site instead, which saves a lot of time when building the support. Um, and this is a thrust network uh, analysis of the, the, the arcs. You, you see here the, the horizontal thrusts. So these perimeter arches are built in a traditional way using formwork and also regular bricks. And the thickness you see on these arches are based on the thickness of a regular brick. And in the digital model, we could easily extract blueprints for formwork for these arches. And then the workshop began and we started building formwork, which took a shockingly long time. And, and another thing that took a long time was cleaning all the bricks, which we, we bought used from an old farm building. And then the rain started pouring down but somehow we managed to, to start building these arches. And uh, it was actually a, a lot of fun and a quite social event. The, the area totally covered is nine square meters. So the span is a little bit less than three meters. But each of the arches have different heights and they, they land on different heights, so the whole thing becomes asymmetrical. But using the laser guidance, this shouldn't be a problem. And in the end, we had four beautiful arches uh, to start the domical tile vault from. And to make the domical tile vault, we made another thrust network analysis and tweaked it, extracted a surface from it, and uh, for the laser guidance, uh, you see the digital laser beams, the red beams there, for the, uh, we needed uh, digital bricks so the lasers would know where to point. And over the surface uh, bricks were generated using Grasshopper. And also in Grasshopper, we could grab the horizontal thrust values and create, create force vectors and check that the moment forces on the supports weren't too big. In order to make sure that the lasers were pointing at the right spots and as a backup system, I made a adjustable guide work which uh, had a re reciprocal version within Grasshopper. And using, uh, using that digital guide work, uh, you could extract numbers um, to properly position the, the real guide work. So let's look at how the lasers will point at the individual bricks. And then Grasshopper, Grasshopper was set up so it would point at uh, concentric rows around the perimeter arches. And on site, this was all controlled from a technology checkpoint situated in the vault from last summer. 
and we had to make calibrations to the lasers uh, which was done during night at first to be able to see the laser beams but th this is not a necess necessary procedure and we learned that smoke I easily blows away outdoors and then we set up everything to start building on the domical tile vault you see the laser working away at the top of the old vault and the people working away at the first row of, of uh, the brick tiles moving the guide work uh, to check that the laser spots were in the right position as well and it turned out to work pretty well here you see one of the bricks being aligned and that's about as far as we got for, and for the first layer it's a uh, common practice to use fast setting gypsum mortar and we learned that uh, dry bricks and warm weather made the gypsum settle really fast and it's this that enables them to cantilever mid-air in just a matter of seconds. The accuracy of the laser was pretty good and here you can see a scan of the new built uh, rows of brick uh, beside the digital model. As a conclusion the various digital aids presented here uh, are all available to architects at a quite low cost and together they mitigate many of the problems associated with vault construction today. And the idea of this thesis was to suggest a potential workflow for both small and large architectural practices, how to efficiently build compression structure today using digital tools and the old efficient vaulting technique, the Catalan vault or the tile vault. And do, during the summer after this thesis completion, the domical tile vault was also completed, as you can see in these three last images. Thank you for listening. This film was an appendix to a master thesis in architecture at Chalmers University of Technology, written by me. Carl Robin Nilsson.